Hello there viewers, welcome to this video. This is your host again coming to show you another project built just for fun. Many of you out there have heard of the beloved EEPROM. Well, you may have seen other videos in the past where I've made very low quality digital audio recorders that would record sound onto static RAM. Well here I have built a similar audio recording device except it records audio in real time direct onto an EEPROM of course using discrete logic components no microcontrollers in this project we have a number of components being utilized let me go ahead and play a sample this is a digital recording being performed on an EPROM on the 9th of June of the year 2018 recorded live on an EPROM with a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz 8-bit, this is a digital recording being performed on an EPROM on the 9th of June of the year 2018, recorded live on an EPROM with a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz, 8-bit, this is a digital recording being performed on an EPROM. Reset the address to zero, this is resetting the CD4040 counters. This is a digital this is this this is a digital recording beautifully non-volatile. There right, goes that crap again. 2018 recorded live on a Sometimes I gotta get that ADC a a start signal before it starts um actually doing analog to digital conversion. The way I have this rigged up is the clock signal is being derived from the ADC. Not entirely from the ADC. I have the pulse generator going into the analog to digital converter and then the analog to digital converter is doing its conversion which takes time. The interrupt output of the analog to digital converter is then giving out the clock at a sampling rate and that is what then drives the counters. Let's hear this EEPROM. Of EEPROM on January and Q sampling rate is 16 kilograms. On this EEPROM I made a recording and then I decided to try to see what would happen if I tried to record over a section without erasing the EEPROM first. And you'll hear. Sampling rate is 16 kilograms. Of EEPROM on January and Q sampling rate is 16 kilograms. So without showing any schematics, much to the disappointment of everybody, I will describe the different parts of this project. So here is the beloved EEPROM. This one being 128 kilobytes. It's a 27C010. Also would be compatible to use the 27C1001. Both the same size and have the same pinout. There are two CD4040 12-bit counters to give the address. The analog to digital converter is an ADC0804 and pin 3 which is right on it is tied to interrupt pin, pin 5. Pin 4 is a clock input which receives a high frequency signal from the pulse generator 
and the current uh, frequency of that is a whopping 1.16 megahertz. Where right now coming yeah, out of the AC is 16 kilohertz. And um, the chip select on the ADC is tied low and the read on the ADC is being used like a select, like an enable and disable of the outputs. That way whenever I'm not wanting to write onto an EEPROM, I still have the ADC chip selected, therefore the, uh, the, it's still, so, so to speak, doing conversions, i.e. it's still dividing the clock frequency from the pulse generator down to a sampling rate so that it can still run the counters when you're playing back an EEPROM. When I go to record onto an EEPROM, I simply put through an inverter to invert the chip select on the EEPROM to disable the, not, not, not the chip select, but the output enable. Invert that so it's getting a high, so the outputs are not enabled, so we don't get bus contention and it makes read low so that it it outputs from the analog to digital converter which can then be used to go into the EEPROM. It also makes the program pin low. I have another switch on here which will turn on this relay and one side of the relay will switch the VCC of the EEPROM from 5 volts to 6.5 volts DC needed, needed when in programming mode and also it switches from having zero volts or tying the VPP programming pin low into putting a 12 volt programming voltage on pin one of this chip so that the chip will receive data. Right here I have a AD558 uh, 8 bit digital to analog converter. You could use a digital analog converter chip or you could just use an R2R ladder. And the configuration I'm using is pins um, 16, 15, and 14 are all tied to the output, audio output. Pins 12 and 13 are grounded. And pins 11 is going to positive. And pins 9 and 10 are both tied low. And then I have a, two low pass filters in series with a critical frequency of roughly 4 kilohertz. And um, the f values I'm using is 470 microfarad and 0 0.1, I mean excuse me, 470 ohms and 0 0.1 microfarad on both the filters in series. I'm doing the same also during recording. I have a small condenser microphone right here with a 10 kilo ohm resistor to positive to power the mic going to a one transistor amplifier after that it goes through two of the same types of low pass filters as I described earlier then it goes to a summing amplifier with an LM741 and a trimmer on one of the inputs that it sums to get um, to get uh, it's between the trimmers be as one side tied to ground the other side tied to negative 5 volts so that I can add a negative value because it's inverting so I can try to center the audio signal in between 0 volts and 5 volts the best that I can although it's I, it's not perfect but it's better than it would be without that add, without adding a DC offset. This is an added DC offset. I also have a gain control in here too. And then that's going into the analog to digital converters. Analog input pin, pin 6. And it's pretty much self-explanatory right there. Then I have an AND gate right here so that if I am in write mode the um, the EEPROM will only cycle through the addresses one time then stop so that I don't 
run over the part that I already recorded on accidentally. Then when I go back to play mode, it will just loop over and over and over again on playback. I'm currently erasing a few EEPROMs, and once they're done erasing, I can demonstrate recording in action on this device. And anyway, it's it's a very fun project. Combining some dope. Look at that. The EEPROM eraser literally just finished erasing a whole bunch of EEPROMs. So anyway, but this is a good project to combine various knowledge of digital logic and some analog circuitry and it's great great fun. Over here I got my illustrious EEPROM programmer and EEPROM eraser. Later I will be playing audio files direct in the video which are very special audio files because they were audio files created using homemade hardware on the digital audio recorder. Then the EEPROM is loaded onto the computer from the EEPROM programmer and saved as a binary file. And then I can import them as raw data into Audacity and listen to them in a higher quality, more pure, so to speak. Because it's a direct audio file on the computer. Wait! Now to transport all these EEPROMs. These are all blank and they're all 128 kilobyte chips. Okay, so let's plop an EEPROM on there. Uh, I made sure to cover everything up with my shoulder as per standard protocol. Murphalicious uh, protocol. Well, obviously... This EEPROM was not successfully erased. Chances are there was still some residue from the sticker that didn't come off the window good. Let's check on some of these other EEPROMs. I bet this one's not erased either. Nope. Looks like this is a blank EEPROM. Perhaps maybe this EEPROM was just too close to the edge and wasn't getting a good uh, good exposure to the, v, to the UV light. So this is a blank EEPROM. So this would be a good candidate to record on to. We'll turn on our trusty oscilloscope and this is just so I can set my DC offset to a more or less acceptable but to be completely honest with you not anywhere near perfect value. We go into we have these two switches one of them simply switches the uh, chip to program mode and the analog to digital converter to read mode it basically sets it up for recording without actually recording because this other switch is what turns the relay on and actually applies the programming voltages to the chip. First we turn that on and you can hear the audio is coming directly through being picked up by the mic. The current sampling rate is 16 kilohertz. We can look at the oscilloscope screen and see the waveform. Hello, but if I speak loudly enough you can see that it does clip. Uh, now if I were to control the DC offset, I want you to notice, you know, if it's down too much, notice it sounds more distorted and looks more bad. If it's up too much, it's way too much, but if you get it kind of right in the middle, you can make a better recording that way, like this. Then you can adjust the gain, the sensitivity, and just be careful not to make it clip. We'll turn the audio or the amplifier down so we don't get feedback. We'll speak into the mic and try to get a decent amplitude without too much clipping. Hello, 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 hello. We're at 16 kilohertz and 
then we'll, re, uh, we'll turn on the programming voltages okay and then we'll reset the address and it will start counting from address 0 up to the maximum address to get 128 kilobytes we are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz on the 9th of June. Did it really already get to the end? There's no way. Apparently it did. Because this light's on. When that light's on, it's gotten to the end. Well, let's go to the start. Let's do this. EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz on the 9th, we were recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we were recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we were recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16. Now you notice a weird look to the waveform. That's because the oscilloscope currently is monitoring the unfiltered version. Although the amplifier is monitoring the filtered version. We are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of... Now there is some clipping too. Now let's move the scope probe to look at the filtered audio. We are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling... That's really weird. We are recording Holy crap. onto an EEPROM... So not on the right... Oh, man capacitively coupling through the breadboard. I was not on the right breadboard. We are recording onto an e Monitor the unfiltered audio with the scope. We are recording onto an e at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we are recording... And now we'll monitor the audio without filtering as well. Recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. On the 9th, we are recording. Very interesting indeed. I'm going to find where I can stick my audio wire. And oh, gee whiz. We are recording. Is that fully filtered? No, the filter output is here to get both filters here. We are recording we onto it. And then the filter output with the scope is right here. We are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz. So, although I kind of like the look of monitoring the output filter, it looks cool. We are recording, we are recording onto an EEPROM. Okay, we're going to uh, record at a lower sampling rate now. We're going to do a recording at 8 kilohertz next. Now, normally I should be adjusting the filter every time, but due to my laziness, I'm just leaving it as is. So, okay, another EEPROM's loaded on. Let's see if it's blank. It's blank. The oscilloscope goes all the way up because it's all F's or 1's on there. So it shows that it's a blank EEPROM. If I reset the address, it still has it's that, that at every address, so it's not going to change. And we'll set the sampling rate down to 16 kilohertz. I mean 8 kilohertz. Okay, now that we got that set to 8 kilohertz, then we can go monitoring the audio now. We'll wait for the last address to get reached so that it will stop clocking.
I want to do that before I put the EEPROM into program mode, that is where the voltages are applied. Okay, it's gone to the last address. Okay, I'm going to make a recording where I pick up at more of a distance. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. I am uh, speaking here. I am speaking here. I'm speaking here. I'm speaking here. Okay, let's try that. On to 128 kilobytes of EEPROM I go. Erasable, programmable, read-only memory on the 9th of June of the year 2018. Shout out to this guy, Fritz. Okay, cut off right then. We will... Holy crap. I wasn't recording. I didn't turn on my programming voltages. Let's do that again. Programming voltage. Okay. Rio, geez. Okay. On to erasable, programmable, read only memory. My voice goes. Shout out to this guy, Fritz, on the YouTubes. Shout out to the 8 track chap. On the YouTubes, recording on an EEPROM on the night. Oh, it cut off. Okay. Turn off the programming voltages. Go back to read mode. Turn on the amp. Now, we'll lower the sampling rate again. Get another chip, block the camera with my back and my shoulder so that I can make sure this video's quality is kept at its lowest. Maybe not its lowest, but kept fairly low. I have to make sure my videos aren't of too high quality Otherwise, Murphy will get upset with me, and I don't. And it's better not to tick him off. So, okay, make sure it's blank. It's blank. So we're, we'll we'll lower our sampling rate down to a freaking crazy, and it's going to have a lot of aliasing. Believe me, because I'm going to leave the filter as is. If the cutoff frequency is going to be too high for this. It's going, to, it's going to alias so much, it's going to distort like mad, it's going to sound crazy. It will probably even have hints of speech scrambling frequency inversion taking place because of the aliasing. Go into uh, write mode without actually the programming voltages, and you can see, it's interesting to see on the scope, the, uh, because of the lower sampling rate, the uh, you can see the effect that quantity the the quantization the, you know, the quantization you can just see the way the digital itself looks it's a lot more noticeable all the, because every sample it's a lot more coarse the sampling rate is so much lower you can actually see a very stair step like uh, pattern to the waveform. Uh, Hello, hello, hello. If I monitored the filtered output, hello, hello, it's a lot smoother. Okay, so now my voice comes in. We'll turn the level.
level down this time. We'll just speak up pretty close to it this time for this recording. Hello, 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 hello. Adjust our DC offset and we'll turn on our programming voltages. This will make a very long, a much longer recording onto the EEPROM this way. So, 4 kilohertz, programming voltage is on, write mode is on, I just got to set the address to 1 and start, or to 0, excuse me, and start speaking. Up close, of course. Okay, so, if you can even understand my voice, this is a 4 kilohertz sampling rate EEPROM audio 120 8 kilobyte long 8 bit wide audio recording completely digital this is recorded on homemade hardware using discrete logic chips and an op amp and a analog to digital converter and okay it just ran to the last address so we'll go back to play mode put in resetting of the address and Yeah. You know, maybe it's a timing thing or something, but um I think I probably even had better luck with recording on RAM at that low a sampling rate because it didn't have that much boom sound. That was an interesting experience. Now we're going to try recording at a much higher sampling rate. We'll try 32 kilohertz. This chip is not blank. See that? See the waveforms? Holy crap! Yeah, I turned the amp off and I didn't realize it. That's why I said holy crap. Okay, that's the one that didn't get erased successfully. Or there's two of them like that. Oh no. What about this one? Good. This one's blank. So we'll set the sampling rate up to a nice 32 kilohertz. I'm sure we won't have very much recording time, but we should have a lot better uh, sound quality. So, it's getting to this area on the signal gener this uh, pulse generator where it's getting hard. It's wanting to jump around like crazy up at this area, at this setting. Come on. Okay, we're pretty close to 32 kilohertz. We're not exactly at it. We're more at like 30 point something, kind of going between that and 32, but we're pretty close. So we'll do that. Right mode. Hello, hello, hello. My waveform looks better. A lot better. Enable the programming voltages. Hello, hello. Okay, this is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds of it. Yeah, see, it, it, it already stopped, but. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital so audio recording. So freaking blurry. Thirty-two kilohertz. Looks like Probably not crap. very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording. Thirty-two kilohertz. Probably not very many. Let's see what it sounds like if it's not filtered. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording. Thirty-two kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording. Thirty-two kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. One or a single order filter. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording. Thirty-two kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording. And 
two order filter, double order. This is audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio. Anyway. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. No, I just love it. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital Best quality results are, of course, obtained if I have an EEPROM that is taken from an actual PCM audio file, like a WAV file, which is PCM generally, and put it right onto an EEPROM. Let's see if this has a desirable sample on it from the computer. Okay. Obviously much better sound quality than I'm able to attain with the digital audio recording hardware. But anyway, this is a very fun project. This is the Dark Cassette Master recommending this type of project to people that want to um, get a little bit of playing around with the logic gates or maybe if they need to make some special project in college or something or, or I don't know just to mess around because you know it's not just blinking the light or something it's 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 a joy and the fun of actually recording your voice and the coolness of an EEPROM chip because although they're kind of obsolete nowadays they really have an aesthetic appeal with that quartz window actually seeing the silicon die inside it's just a thing to behold and there's something cool about like getting a programmer for it and getting an eraser and stuff but for such a project as this you don't need an EEPROM programmer I mean, obviously, it's not like you're going to be putting data on the chip. You're just going to, or, you know, like a program, you're just going to be putting audio. But still, you know, you don't need a programmer. And you could just use a toothbrush sterilizer to erase the chips if you have one of those. Or have it out in the sunlight for a week. But, um, anyway, it's a really fun kind of project that uses some basic logic gate stuff, you know, analog to digital, digital to analog, you know, counters, you know, filters, you know, op amps, you know, yeah, um, and of course the illustrious EEPROM. And you can also see the effects of aliasing, you know, with a low sampling rate and you don't have a good enough filter and it sounds all weird and distorted and the whole stuff dealing with Nyquist and stuff like that anyway it's just a really fun project and um, of course now on the video we'll be presenting uh, some samples directly uh, uh, put onto the computer so you can hear um, kind of a more direct representation of what this sounds like I might even show uh, what the waveforms look like on Audacity to see just how crappy my DC offset uh, going on there was, how, uh, how badly I failed at uh, putting it exactly in the middle or um, not clipping the audio because as you can see the Audacity waveforms are all clipped and the offset like the offset's like way down here and it's all mumbo jumbo but anyway. Hope you enjoyed this video recorded on the 9th of June 2018 but I'm not sure if it will end up being uploaded on the 9th of June it might it might be uploaded tomorrow I'm not so sure but anyway hopefully I didn't use too much memory on my camera okay now we're going to be playing direct recordings on Audacity now Many of you out there, of course, who may be watching this video probably have a decent quality sound system hooked up to your computer. I want to warn you that the recordings you will be hearing are all clipped to the extreme. 
So if you, especially if you have good quality speakers, turn them way down and turn the treble all the way down. It's also advisable, if possible, just use headphones instead and turn it down if you want to help protect your speakers because the type of sound you're going to be hearing through this is extremely clipped. I have warned you. Okay, so now we're going to show how it is when we have the files that of the audio that was taken directly from the EEPROM and uh, imported as raw data into Audacity. So this first recording is when I first initially tested the digital audio recorder to record directly onto an EEPROM. And this was on an EEPROM that I had recorded a music sample on earlier. So the the test was also out of curiosity how it would be recording on an EEPROM that hadn't been erased yet. So here goes. Oh, and it's recorded at close to 8 kilohertz, but not quite. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the this was before I added the DC offset. This is a part of the original music that was on the EEPROM that I had put on earlier. That was recorded at a low sampling rate. And these other parts, you can see there's no, that none of the DC offset was added. So the audio is, it's like all wants to go towards the bottom. So it's all weird. This section was recorded at a very low sampling rate and is completely unintelligible. Okay, so now let's import another uh, file. File. Now this, you can see I had kind of a DC offset in there, but it's not quite in the middle. And of course it's clipped like crazy. Also notice that only half of the space of the, of the uh, EEPROM was taken because I had moved the wire for the circuitry to cut off when I would use up the whole memory and I put it at the wrong spot and it so I actually recorded on half of the of the 64 kilobytes that I could have done and I only got 32 kilobytes worth but anyway Quite interesting sounding. So now we're going to import another one. Unsign, good. You can see that I tried putting the DC offset in, but it was not centered well at all. The It's way down here. So anyway, let's see how this one goes. This is a digital recording being performed on an EEPROM on the 9th of June of the year 2018. Recorded live on an EEPROM with a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz, 8-bit, direct. This is a digital recording being performed on an EEPROM on the 9th of June of the year 2018, recorded live on an EEPROM with a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz, 8-bit, direct. So you can hear that although it was still distorted and had noise, it actually had lots of intelligibility. The audio quality was actually somewhat clear. So now we're going to go with a 16 kilohertz recording that I did. And we'll see how this one goes. Also, you can see the DC offset 
is down there. Also, this is the one where I tried recording onto the chip after having recorded on it earlier out of curiosity. Sampling rate is 16 kilograms of EEPROM on January, excuse me. Sampling rate is 16 kilograms of EEPROM on January, excuse me. Of course you notice I started mentioning the month of January because all these J months, you know, you gotta say the wrong one first, and before you can correct yourself, you run out of memory. Now, notice the DC offset, although not perfectly centered, is a heck of a lot better on this one. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. This is a digital audio recording, 32 kilohertz. Probably not very many seconds. Although it got some static clipping in the audio, the actual sound quality is quite good on that one, especially considering it was made on all homemade hardware. And now, the 4 kilohertz one. Now that one was a big disappointment for me. Because normally you would have been, a you should have been able to hear, hear actual audio, albeit with very low quality. But for some reason, when I did it this time, it had this weird sound put in there. I'm not sure why it did that, but anyway, here it is. Sixteen kilohertz on Sunday bit PCM one channel. We are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of sixteen point one six kilohertz on the ninth. We are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of sixteen point one six kilohertz on the ninth. We are recording onto an EEPROM at a sampling rate of 16.16 kilohertz on the 9th. It may sound distorted and not perfect, although it is quite intelligible and the audio quality is pretty clear. It almost sounds like an old two-way radio effect that they want to use on a movie or something to try to mimic the sound of a two-way radio without actually using a two-way radio. This one's 8 kilohertz. Okay, and you can see the DC offset's pretty close on this one. Clipped like a madman, the recordings where I speak up close to the mic tend to come out a lot better than the ones where I try to pick it up at a distance, because this one I try to pick it up at a distance, whereas the, some of the other ones I was speaking up closer to the mic, and uh, this one came out pretty bad and is uh, harder to understand. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed these recordings. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video showing a digital audio recorder. Completely homemade, discrete chip-based digital audio recorder. 
And anyway, uh, yeah, so, well, now it's midnight, so, I mean, it, it says 11.02 p.m., it's really 12.02 p.m., you know, I, I moved here to Massachusetts, but I have still left my computer clock set at Central Time, so, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys later.